are watching the Polytechnic University of the Philippines College Entrance Test, also known as PUPSEC, reviewer number five, featuring questions in mathematics and covering basic concepts in algebra, geometry, and trigonometry. There are 10 questions featured in this reviewer. All questions are modeled on actual questions that appeared on previous PUP College Entrance Tests. Before you proceed, please don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click the bell icon to make sure you are notified of all new reviewers and other important updates. Let's begin. Question number one. Given that x raised to three times x raised to five equals y raised to eight, what is y raised to three equal to if x equals four? A. 16. B. 24. C. 42. D. 64. The correct answer is D. 64. Recall that, when multiplying variables with the same base but different exponents, we add the exponents. Hence, x raised to 3 times x raised to 5 is simply x raised to 8. If x raised to 8 equals y raised to 8, then x cubed should also equal y cubed. And since x equals 4, y cubed should be 4 cubed, or 64. Question number 2. 27,813 incoming college students took the PUP set this year. If only 2,836 were admitted into the Polytechnic University system among those students, what is PUP's acceptance rate? A. 7.5% B. 9% C. 10.2% D. 13.4% The correct answer is C. PUP's acceptance rate is 10.2%. This is a simple percentage problem. To get PUP's acceptance rate, we simply divide the number of admitted students by the total number of incoming college students who took the PUP set. We should quickly arrive at 0.1019667. Since the answer choices are expressed in percent, we multiply our preliminary answer by 100 to get 10.19667%. We can simply round this off to 10.2%. Question number 3. Given the functions f of g equals g over 4 plus g squared, x of y equals y minus 1, and g of x equals x plus 6, what is the value of f of g, of x, of y, if y equals 5? a. 56.7 b. 64.5 c. 100 d. 102.5 The correct answer is d. 102.5 we are dealing here with nested functions. Step 1. Since the value of y is given, let's start with the function which involves y. x of y equals y minus 1. Substituting y equals 5, we have x of y equals 4, or simply x equals 4. That is, x is equal to 4 when y is equal to 5. Step 2. Now we substitute x, which we computed to be 4, into the g of x function g of x equals 10, or simply g equals 10. That is, g is equal to 10 when x is equal to 4. Next, we now substitute g, which we computed to be 10, into the f of g function. f of g equals g over 4 plus g squared. f of g equals 10 over 4 plus 10 squared, which is equal to 102.5. Remember that g is actually the function g of x, and x is the function x of y. Therefore, f of g of x of y equals 102.5. Question number 4. What is the expression fourth root of x cubed equivalent to? a. x raised to 3 fourths. b. x squared. c. x raised to 7. d. x raised to 4 over 3. The correct answer is a. x raised to 3 fourths. Recall the rules in converting radicals to exponents. In general, the nth root of x can be expressed as x raised to the power of 1 over n. And the nth root of x raised to m can be expressed as x raised to m over n. Therefore, 
The fourth root of x cubed is equal to x raised to 3 over 4. Question number 5. What is the point of intersection of the following lines? Line A. Y equals 4x plus 8. Line B. Y equals 7x plus 5. A. 1, 12. B. 1, 24. C. 4, 16. D. 5, 10. The correct answer is A. The point of intersection of lines A and B is the point X equals 1 and Y equals 12. To find the point of intersection of the lines given by Y equals 4X plus 8 and Y equals 7X plus 5, we need to set the equations equal to each other and solve for X. We should quickly arrive at X equals 1. After finding the value of X, we substitute it to either of the given equations. Both should result to Y equals 12. Therefore, the point of intersection of the two given lines is the point x equals 1 and y equals 12. Question number 6. What is the volume of the biggest sphere that can fit in a cube with a volume of 216 cubic centimeters? A. 20. B. 36 pi. C. 40 pi. D. 9 pi squared. The correct answer is B, the volume of the biggest sphere that can fit into a cube with volume of 216 cubic centimeters is 36 times pi cubic centimeters. Let's draw the solids described in the question for a better appreciation of the problem. Now, let's take a snapshot of one of the surfaces of the cube. We can visualize it two-dimensionally as a circle inscribed inside a square. From this view we can see that the side of the square has the same length as the diameter of the circle. So if the square has a side of A, then the diameter of the circle should also be A. It follows that the radius of the circle must be one half of A. Agree? We are given the volume of the enclosing cube. Do you recall your formula for the volume of a cube? The formula for the volume of a cube is simply S cubed, where S is the length of each edge or side of the cube. In our drawing that is A, so the volume of our cube is A cubed. We already know the volume to be 216 cubic centimeters. Substituting this in the formula we can now solve for A, which is 6 centimeter. Do you follow? Now remember that the side or edge of the cube has the same length as the diameter of the inscribed sphere. So the diameter should also be 6 centimeters. Therefore, the radius of the sphere is 3 centimeters. Finally, let's proceed to compute for the volume of the inscribed sphere. The formula for the volume of a sphere is volume of sphere equals 4 over 3 times pi times r cubed, where r is the radius of the sphere. Substituting our computed value for r, we should quickly arrive at 36 pi as our correct answer. Question number 7. What is the sixth term of the given series? 1, 5, 11, 17. 33. A. 47. B. 50. C. 59. D. 61. The correct answer is D. The sixth term of the given series is 61. We are being asked for the sixth term in the given series. The given series already has five terms, so we are essentially looking for the next term after 33. Let's call it X for now. The series neither has a common difference nor a common ratio, so it is neither an arithmetic progression nor a geometric progression. We'll need to manually figure out the principle behind the series. Looking at the fifth term, 33. Did you notice that the three terms preceding it add up to 33? That is, 5 plus 11 plus 17 equals 33. We may be onto something here. Let's test the same pattern on the fourth term, 17. Will the three terms preceding it add up to 17? 1 plus 5 plus 11 equals 17. Yes, they do add up to 17. Unfortunately, there's not enough terms preceding 11 to also test it. But two identical relationships between terms should already suffice to establish the principle behind the series. The principle behind the given series is that each new term of the series is arrived at by adding the three terms immediately preceding it. Applying the same principle, we can find the sixth term, x, by adding up the three terms preceding it. 
11 plus 17 plus 33 equals 61. Therefore, the correct answer is 61. Question number 8. 1 plus tangent squared theta is equal to a. Sine squared theta b. Cotangent squared theta c. Cosine squared theta d. Secant squared theta The correct answer is d. Secant squared theta. This problem involves trigonometric identities, particularly the Pythagorean trigonometric identities. There are three Pythagorean trigonometric identities as follows. 1. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. 2. 1 plus tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta. 3. Cosecant squared theta equals 1 plus cotangent squared theta. Our given problem is exactly identical as the second Pythagorean trigonometric identity. Did you already see that? We don't even need to do any substitutions and or simplifications. Therefore, the correct answer is secant squared theta. If you need a refresher on trigonometric identities, we recommend you watch our mathematics drills on trigonometric identities. You can find the link in the description below. Question number 9. Logarithm base 5 of z is equal to 2. What is the value of z? a. 5 over 2 b. 7 c. 10 d. 25 the correct answer is D, 25. Recall that a logarithm is simply an exponent. Let's illustrate what we mean by this by using the general form of a logarithmic function. Logarithm base B of N equals A. The logarithmic function simply tells us what value of A should be B raised to, to arrive at N. In other words, logarithm base B of N equals A is the same as N equals B raised to A. Do you follow? Going back to our given logarithmic equation, logarithm base 5 of z equals 2 can therefore be written in exponent form as z equals 5 raised to 2. Therefore, z equals 25. Easy, right? If you need a refresher on logarithms and exponents, we recommend you watch our mathematics drills on logarithms and exponents. You can find the link in the description below. Question number 10. Given the figure as shown, where AC equals 5 and BC equals 12, what is the area of the shaded portions of the circle? A. 21.125 pi minus 30. B. 20 pi plus 30. C. 14 pi minus 30. D. 13 pi minus 30. The correct answer is A. 21.125 pi minus 30. Analyzing the figure, we should surmise that the area of the shaded portion should be equal to the area of half of the whole circle, which is a semicircle, minus the area of the inscribed right triangle. Agree? We can readily compute for the area of the inscribed right triangle since its height and the length of its base are given as 5 and 12, respectively. We simply substitute these to the formula for the area of a triangle and should quickly arrive at 30 square units. To get the area of the semicircle, we first need to find the diameter of the circle. The diameter of the circle is actually the hypotenuse AB of the inscribed right triangle. Agree? Using Pythagorean formula, we can compute for the hypotenuse AB, which is also the diameter, and arrive at 13. Now we can compute for the area of the semicircle, which is simply half of the area of the whole circle. We should arrive at 21.125 pi as the area of the semicircle. For our final step, we simply go back to step 1 and plug in our computed values for the areas of semicircle and triangle. Therefore, the area of the shaded portions is 21.125 pi minus 30. have just watched the PUP College Entrance Test Reviewer number 5, featuring questions on mathematics. Check out more related review videos and playlists on our channel. If you find this useful, please like and share. Leave a comment to share your thoughts or questions regarding this reviewer or any particular part of it. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to Review Central and click the bell button to get notified of all future reviewers and updates. Like and follow us on your favorite social media platforms.
Good luck to your forthcoming PUP College entrance test and we look forward to congratulating you for passing the exam. Thank you.